Um, the second piece of that is kind of similar, but a little bit different. You've got to be honest with yourself first about expectations. Everyone is going to have different things that they're going to ask of you as a young entrepreneur. Oh, can I get a discount? The answer should always be no. That's number one. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode of the Black Cows Podcast. It's me, Kyle, your host. In this episode, we're going to be speaking with Courtney Futch, the founder of The Spread and Thunder Cakes. Courtney, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Can you just tell us a little bit about yourself and your story? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so first, thank you so much for having me. Very excited to be here. Um, so I guess in order to provide some context, um, so right now, yes, I do own two businesses, um, Thunder Cakes and The Spread. I've owned Thunder Cakes for eight years now. I started it in 2012 as a college freshman. Um, I went to Syracuse University where I was broke uh, my first <laughs> year in, in college. I had like $6.14. I was working two jobs. Um, neither of them was enough. Uh, my parents were you know, very helpful in terms of like paying for school. Um, but I still ended up, you know, taking out loans and all those things. So I really didn't want to ask them for anything. Um, but I've been baking like my whole life. So I started when I was like six or seven. It's something that I just kind of like did here and there. I did a thing called fudgy Fridays in high school where every mm -hmm. Friday I would bake stuff and then bring it in and sell it for like a dollar a piece just to have spending money. So um, I think that same sort of spirit moved with me into college. Um, I started Thunder Cakes as kind of like a bake sale type thing. So I just make like maybe 50 items. And then just once I was sold out, I was sold out. And then it started turning into more custom requests, like within that year. Um, and then I decided, okay, like, let me really formalize this business. I put it on a website, um, tried to make it more of like a formal e-commerce model. And I had never really been around entrepreneurship like that. If you had asked me the first year that I started, I was like, oh, this is my side hustle. Somebody else had to call it entrepreneurship on my behalf. And I was like, oh, I guess that is kind of what I'm doing, which is really cool. Um, and then the spread, I started in 2019. And that's like the more savory side um, of what I do. I have, well, I've been baking, you know, forever, but savory is like really where my heart is. And I feel like there's mm -hmm. just so much room to get creative with the combinations um, that I started throwing um, private dinner parties in my apartment. I mean, it started off as doing it just for friends. And then um, some of those friends would tell their friends and they'd book dinner parties with me as well for like their birthdays. And I'd built them a whole theme. And so now it's a split between um, cooking classes, which I host in my space right now. They're all virtual, of course. Um, but cooking classes, private parties um, that people can book me for. So I'll either come to your venue or you can come to mine. And then the last part is themed dinner parties that I throw, um, which are centered around really any number of things. Um, the one I'm most excited about is happening in the fall whenever they let us back outside <laughs> uh, called Trap Soul, S-E-O-U-L. So it is a play on my growing up in Atlanta, and then also Korean food, um, which is one of my favorite cuisine types. So it's a really fun like amalgamation um, of both of those flavors, but with very strong ties and blackness. So I'm really hype about it. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, so I know that was really long. But that's, <laughs> nah, that's perfect. Then. In the spread. So, so I want to talk about the the courses you host. Is it like how would people get into a course that you host? Yeah, um, so the virtual classes, um, right now, we kind of do like a number of topics. Um, I, I try to walk people through the basics that they get really excited about when they're at my parties. Um, so um, the first one was uh, my goat cheese stuffed chicken, and we did like a crispy herbed potato, um, which are, you know, just like kind of simple things that I cook that are really great for the weeknight, um, but could also be a very fancy kind of like date night in or a Sunday dinner. Um, and the last one that we did was 
like um, surf and turf. And then upcoming, we're doing a fried chicken, like cornbread kind of soul food situation. Um, essentially, all of that info kind of lives right now on my Instagram um, because it's only like 5 to $15 per course. Um, and anybody can join and that's really per household. So I'll be announcing additional dates soon since I'm traveling right now. Um, but yeah, courses are, they're fun. We do them over Zoom and like, I show you how to make the cocktail that accompanies the meal as well. So we have a lot of fun with it. Um, but it's really one of those things that just kind of lives on my Instagram at the moment. Um, and then my in-person classes live on my website. That's a genius idea in terms of how you were further able to monetize your cooking skills because most people when they realize that they're great at cooking and they want to sell they just think traditionally to go and start selling food or just creating a kitchen but to start doing courses i think that's that's genius but i want to talk about you hosting dinner parties in your in your house what how did that idea come about it just makes so much sense but i feel like most people wouldn't think to do something like that yeah um so it's it's funny when I first moved to Jersey uh, in like 2016, I was trying to find a way to get all my friends together and our schedules were so crazy. Um, but I was friends with a lot of couples at the time I was in a relationship. And so, um, we were trying to find ways to get all of like the, how do we get all our couple friends together without having to go out to eat? And so I was like, well, I mean, I, you know what I'm saying? I throw down. Um, how about we get everybody to come over here? So that was happening with maybe a group of about 10 to 12 people at first, including myself. Um, and it was something that like I really enjoyed. I would get like super into the theme. I'd send out like official invitations. It was like a whole thing. And at the time it was just like a, something I was passionate about, but I wasn't sure how I wanted to translate it. Um, and I had a roommate at the time, so I was trying to be respectful of like her space as well. Um, but when I moved into my space, I was like, your girl got hella room. This is lovely. <laughs> and um, I'd say about like six months into being in my space, I had a dinner party for some friends to celebrate Thanksgiving. Um, and it was about like 30 of us. And I was like, okay, like I've got this space. I'm kind of figuring out like how to cook for this large an amount of people all at once. Um, and you know, still have it like tied back into a theme. And we turned it into like a game night. It was so much fun. So it was kind of from like November of 2018 that I realized, oh, there's like a, there's a really great opportunity here. So in January, 2019, I launched like my first dinner party. Um, it wasn't under the spread yet. I didn't come up with that name until like a few months later. But it was just like, okay, like how do I get people together? And then y'all cover my costs. So, like I just, I want to cook you food. Everybody always wants me to cook them food or they'll be like, hey, I'll like, I'll send you $20 if you make me those potatoes again, mm -hmm. which I've had happen and I think is really cool. But I was just like, okay, like the exchange of like you giving me a bottle for food is not enough because mm -hmm. we'll run through these bottles during this party and then I still paid like three four or five hundred dollars for food because I want to create like really high quality gourmet things so eventually at first it was just like okay y'all cover you know cash at me like 15 20 bucks that'll cover your costs and then we're good to go once I started really getting into like the decor and everything um was when I was like oh the prices have to go up like once I was making the cocktail myself, I was like, oh, they have to go up. So eventually, like now I'm anywhere between like, you know, $60, $70 per party. That's like bare minimum. Um, but, you know, you're getting unlimited cocktails. You're getting, um, you know, full full decor. And that's whether you're, you know, it's your party or my party. doesn't really matter. All of those things are included. All the silverware, all the drinks, all the, you know, everything. And then people get to take their mason jar full of cocktail home with them. Um, I don't necessarily like brag about that part, but it's just kind of like one of those added perks of like, you know, you came I, and enjoy this later, like once you get home, please do not drink and drive. Um, but yeah, so that was kind of like how the whole thing came to fruition. It was like, oh, I have the space to actually get people in here. And then I just kind of pulled the trigger one day and I was like, oh, okay, we have, well, you know, everybody just like Venmo me, cash at me you know, cover your costs and like, I'll cook us a bomb dinner and that you will never forget. And that happened January, 2019. And I've been doing one dinner party, well, minimum of one a month ever since. And then we, by like the time 2020 started, I was doing like three or four a month, which 
it was crazy um and keeping your girl up at <laughs> night but it was great because I also had like that and thunder cake so most of the time they'd be in conjunction if I was doing a dinner party my cakes were always involved if I'm doing my cakes I'm able to pitch you know my dinner party services for like private groups in the aftermath um so they really do go so hand in hand like they're a perfect complement to each other which I think is great and then starting with the dinner parties gave me like the creative freedom that I needed to like embrace thunder cakes in a whole new way and so now we're doing a whole menu revamp it's a whole new relaunch like I've r and would like 16 flavors so the whole menu and everything is going to look really different and rolling into the back half of 2020 which I'm hype about um but yeah the spread has been a really interesting journey because it was just a lot of like reiterations and like telling people hey I don't think I know what I'm doing just yet but work with me and like we'll figure it out together and every single party has just been a success they've been so much fun gotcha gotcha in terms of how you used thunder cakes to help you find more clients in terms of the spread what other ways do you go about trying to find people for dinner parties or do people just reach out normally? Do you kind of seek certain opportunities? Well, that's a really great question. Um, so there, pre-COVID, there was a pretty clear split in the business that was about 50% um, corporate clients. Um, and that was the same thing with Thunder Cakes too, which I think is kind of interesting. So what would happen is, you know, um, pretty much everybody works somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. So if I made cupcakes for, you know, one person, all it is is simply me letting them know, oh yeah, I also do corporate catering. And they'll be like, oh great, because I work at Twitter. So I'll put you in touch with somebody over here. And I'll be like, oh, okay, great. Like, I don't really ask. It's kind of just letting them know that it's a capability that I have, um, which is awesome. I will say that I've got a really strong network um most likely through you know my Syracuse affiliation um who are always kind of constantly looking out for opportunities to pull thunder cakes in mostly because you know now they get to have my cupcakes for free because their company's is gonna for, pay for it, yeah. uh which works out pretty nicely but for the most part um like I'll do like sponsored ads and sponsored posts on Facebook um on Instagram for sure but I don't really talk a whole lot about the corporate side it's mostly word of mouth also when it comes to consumer so gosh any given point in time I'd say about 90 percent of my customers are coming to or any of the new customers are coming to me through like word of mouth and then sometimes they'll like see me in various like media media things like I've done you know some other press like in the last couple months even pre-glamour um that you know brought some new customers my way and I was like oh this is awesome I I really appreciate that because you know we all know how hard it is for somebody to see a product for the first time ever on the internet you have to have typically about five, six, seven, up to nine, 10 impressions to have somebody actually pull the trigger and place that order. Um, so what I appreciate, what I absolutely do not take for granted is the fact that the visuals are compelling enough for a person the first time they're hearing about Thunder Cakes to go ahead and place an order like the same day that they're hearing about it. Um, I think that that is amazing. I, I do think it also speaks to um, how well we're able to storytell um, with photos, with with descriptions. Um, you know, I think everybody kind of, it, it's, it's one of those things I think the food world can sometimes be kind of elusive, uh, where it's like, oh, you know, I've, I've made this thing and, it, and, it, and it's a gastrique and it's super French and it's very fancy and it, and it feels unattainable for people. But everybody knows what cinnamon tastes like. Mm. Everybody knows what a cream cheese frosting tastes like. I try to talk about food in a way that is elevated, um, but still deals very heavily in concepts that I know people are going to understand so that I don't have to try to convince them that that's something that they would like. Whatever your product is, I think you should be able to describe it in enough layman's terms that somebody who's never thought to put all the combinations of what you do together understands each of them individually and can trust that it'll be good when they're all in one place. Uh, I really appreciate how much thought you really put into building the the story behind the brand. I, I do agree that the biggest part of branding in today's world is the story behind it because there's a lot of people that do a lot of various things. But if you have a great story and you really put the time and effort behind it, it definitely excels. So that's uh, very, very smart. 
have you ever thought about going to like YouTube as for like putting your videos up there maybe for like cooking? Yeah. Um, so I actually, after the whole glamour thing came out, so I did full disclosure, I didn't know when it was coming out. Mm. So we filmed late February. This was pre COVID. Um, I had a dinner party the following day and, or it was actually a brunch, uh, the following day. And you know, the, while the team, while they were there filming, um, were like, you have great presence. You should do like the YouTube thing and whatever. And I was like, oh, yeah, sure. Um, and I'd always like wanted to, but I think it was something about, um, sometimes I think it's just, it's hard to see yourself outside of the way that you see yourself. Like I'm so used to dealing with me as like a personality in person that I was not sure how that was going to translate. But after, you know, the glamour thing came out, like they just, they just dropped it. Like I did not know my Instagram was like blowing up with all these new followers. I was like, who, where? what and like it never dawned on me hey Courtney go and go and check um because I'm ridiculous but Mm -hmm. um I did start a YouTube um a week ago like right after and just like started uploading the stuff that I've been doing on my Instagram because I have been creating content on my Instagram pretty much since about the time that like quarantine started um just showing people how to make like random things um you know jerk pork shoulder Moroccan spiced meatballs over Parmesan buttermilk grits. Um, I'll be sharing like my fried chicken recipe uh, pretty soon. Um, various cocktails, because I do have my bartending license and I, I like to play around with that. So um, I uploaded all of the things, the content that I kind of had already created over on my YouTube and it's been getting some love, which I appreciate. Um, but soon I'll be start once I'm back from Charlotte, I'll be um, sharing, you know, new concepts. I've got like, a content ideas list that's about like 30 bullet points long right now uh, for me to just start running through so I'm really excited about that because there's a lot I want to share I've got a lot of perspective on the food world I also work in the food world in my nine to five so I just feel like there's a lot of like um perspective I can share I'm excited I'm hyped and people have been just like really friendly which is great what's the YouTube channel um, it's just Courtney Fudge. So it's C-O-U-R-T-A. Your name is your name? Yeah. Thanks. And then Fudge. Um, you know? I mean, that way. That's, the way you describe everything is, it makes me want to cook, honestly. <laughs> it makes me <laughs> want to start cooking. Because it's like, there's so much passion. You can tell so much detail and effort that's put behind everything you're saying. Like you said a meal, and I probably can not re- repeat a name, but it sounds delicious. And it sounds like something it's like lap. that. It's lap. Uh-huh. What happened? <laughs> Lap. Yeah, it was really good. <laughs> yeah, so um, that, that definitely seems um, like something a lot of people, and I know a lot of people are in the cooking space too, but the way that you go in detail is definitely stands out. And that was one of the things I saw too from like tuning into the video. I mean, your house, first of all, your space looks very, very nice. So I was like, I'll still call me too. And then secondly, just to see like everything you were doing. And you said you have a nine to five. What is it like managing a nine to five and running? not one, but two businesses? It is a delicate balance. Um, I think, um, I try not to be immune to the fact that like, I need rest, right? Like I'm, I'm nobody superwoman. So, you know, being able to do both, which I'm, I'm really grateful for. For starters, I'm grateful that Thunder Cakes and the spread really do go hand in hand. It'd be difficult if they were like two totally different businesses, but in so many ways they overlap. Um, Thunder Cakes is the umbrella company of the spread. So, um, so much of like what gets done on the, on the back end, even just like managing finances and all that, they all just kind of like roll up into one which does make my life a lot easier. Um, Otherwise, it's a lot of time management. When I'm, you know, at nine to five, if I have like a one hour break in my day, um, you know, for lunch or whatever the case might be, or like maybe I'm wrapping up early, you can almost always find me. I keep like Google Docs just full of recipes and I'm always thinking through stuff. And like I'll, um, you know, during my lunch break, maybe I'll like work on a flyer for a client, shoot that back over to them um, or send over like, you know, the sample menu for a consultation that I'm having. So it's finding like those little breaks in the day that I can kind of tackle like thunder cakes in the spread. But for the most part, I try, I try as best I can to keep the two separate, right? Like it's, 
it's hard because like Thunder Cakes and the spread, as much as they are these other businesses, they are also like my passions. So I'm always thinking about them. Um, and it's a matter of really kind of finding like those hard boundaries to be like, okay, like I'm at work, Courtney, you gotta, you gotta do work stuff, baby girl. And then, you know, when I'm like home, I can open myself up more to like, oh, you know, creative, creatively, what do I want to do with Thunder Cakes? What do I want to do with the spread? I will say that quarantine has given me the time that I've needed to reevaluate both businesses and think about what I want to do um, with either one of them moving forward. Thankfully, I am still working full time, which I'm so, so, so grateful for. Um, but the new challenge is, am I setting things up so that when life returns to whatever quote unquote version of normal um, we're going to be getting back to, are both of my businesses sustainable? Um, I think a lot of people right now need to be thinking about building bulletproof businesses. They're is no such thing as something that's like recession proof but you need to have a business model that can pivot um if all i did was dinner parties i'd be screwed right now um but you know having the ability to having the uh the, the knowledge to be able to move from you know producing a product to teaching about a product um i think is great. Um, and I think that is where a lot of people, I'm so excited to see all the great businesses that come out of this terrible tragedy. Um, I'm very aware that it's a tragedy. It is a crisis. I think we're all grieving, but it'll also be interesting to see the ways that people think to like start filling gaps in the world as a result of this thing that we're all seeing. So being able to pivot has been helpful, um, but mostly to answer your original question, sorry, I, I tend to go off on tangents, but no, it's okay. It's okay. Um, to answer your original question, it is a lot of time management. I have to be realistic with myself about what I can and cannot take on. Um, I'll do a max of four dinner parties in a month. My preference is to do two small ones. Um, so like that's about like 10 people and then maybe one large one. Um, and then, you know, another one might happen on like a weeknight or it's like a birthday thing. And it's a matter of like looking at my schedule and being like, okay, court. And I like to lay everything out there. You should see my work calendar. It's nuts. Um, but I like to lay everything out. When do I have availability? When do I not? Any, like I have a keep, I keep an Excel spreadsheet. When do I have time to do this? When do I want to start blocking stuff off? Where are my personal things? Do I have time to go on any trips? Probably not. Do I have time to, um, you know, when am I, I like I'm doing weddings in 2021, which I'm very excited about. So I'm already like blocking off the calendar for like, I won't be able to do anything during this week. And what I'll do is I'll give myself padding on either side of the event. So for like a week before, and then five days after, I'm not doing anything with anybody as it pertains to food. I won't accept any new orders. I won't accept anything during that time period because cooking is such a creative, um, I call it a creative currency and I don't want to spend all my creative currency on one event. Um, or I'd rather be able, actually to rephrase that, I take that back. I'd rather be able to spend all my creative currency in one event and not have to split it between multiple things because then both suffer. It might not be noticeable to the guest. Um, it might not be noticeable in the food. It's usually not, but I do believe that in order for me to produce the best event possible, I've got to pour myself into what I'm doing. So it's really just a matter of like, I look at my calendar, I see what's already blocked off or, you know, commitments I've already made. I pad time around that to give myself room to breathe um, around those events. And then I don't mind backing things in outside of that. But then other times I have to write things in my spreadsheet that's like, girl, no, you cannot, don't take anything else right now. You should have seen my March pre-COVID. It was nuts. And I was not sure how I was going to survive it. And by, you know, the graces that be, I, you know, only had to take like half of them at the top of the month and then everything else, you know, just cleared up. And I was like, oh, okay, you know, this, this works. So you really have to know yourself and know what your capacity is. I've struggled enough with my scheduling, um, you know, as a college student running Thunder Cakes, like, if I can't do it, I can't do it. If I have to tell a client no, I'm gonna tell them no early and you know, try to be mindful of the fact that they've got something that they're trying to accomplish, whether it's a birthday or you know, some catering thing. It could be whatever, but I have to operate with them in mind first um, and me in mind. Well, no, me in mind first <laughs> and then them in mind immediately after. 
I got you. Have you ever thought about like creating like an event management like kind of company that would like be the umbrella that the spread could then do stuff with them too or partnering with event companies maybe? Okay. Um, you know, it's funny. I have thought about it. So my mom, and I, I did a shout out to my mom in the Glamour video because this lady is incredibly crafty. Um, she also started getting into event planning for other people um, in the last like year or so because she really, Teresa wants to be like me. <laughs> um, but I've been telling her that like it would be really cool for the two of us to work on something together because she i think understands and you know my dad's the same way but my parents aren't together anymore my dad like is really really great at like spatial planning i picked that up from him so like i walk into a room i'm very aware how many tables will fit in a space and all that fun stuff um and i also grew up watching my parents throw a lot of events um for the schools that i went to and for organizations that you know they belong to and stuff so i feel pretty confident that like i could the challenge that I'm having is, do I want to spread myself that thin? I don't know. Um, so I do really well when like somebody else already has the vision for the event and they're bringing me in to be like the culinary director, culinary curator. Um, I've been that for a few um, events at this point and I've really enjoyed that as being like kind of hands off, but also being able to like kind of curate the vision of what the food should look like because I think that's where I shine the most. Um, and also just trying to remember that like I can do everything but not all at once. Um, so yeah, no, I probably, I've been thinking about it though. Eventually I think I'll tackle events. Maybe once I like Thunder Cakes and, and the spread are like a little bit more automated, but for right now, I just don't think it's feasible. And which state are you currently like living? Like permanently? Uh, yeah, I live in New Jersey. Got you. So like in terms of like, if you wish to go to like an event company and just say like the spread, we want to pitch to be like your only like... <laughs> Would you do something like that? Like as a partnership deal, like a, a company that's kind of already well established in the event space or probably not? Oh, I don't know. That's a really great question. Um, I feel like in a lot of ways, I like the autonomy that I have mm -hmm. with both of the businesses because I can, you know, uh, it's kind of like if I want to partner with someone then I can but I'm not beholden to them in the long run outside of the obligations of what we've talked about for like an event or something, which I prefer. Like that's mm -hmm. the, that's a happy space for me being able yeah, to make sense in and out um, because the obligation of, you know, constantly doing that. I think if like me and a person started something off the ground together, sure. Um, but in the meantime, I'm like totally down to do like more short term collaborations. I got you. That definitely makes sense. Um, and that kind of really concludes all the, the topics that I really want to discuss today. Um, my guess in conclusion, I just want to know if you could give one piece of advice to young adult entrepreneurs today, what would that piece of advice be? Oh, gosh. Um, you could give more than one if you feel like you, you have Okay, that. yeah, because I, I do have two. Um, I've been giving this one piece of advice for as long as I've been in, in the, the game, which is eight years now. Um, and through a number of like pitch competitions and all this other stuff, this one piece has remained the same. Be the type of person you would want to work for. Mm -hmm. That is, that has nothing to do with entrepreneurship and everything to do with, with humanhood. Um, and it, it always sounds like such a like fluffy, it's a very hippie philosophy, I guess, but it has helped um, in a lot of ways because people sign up for your vision, but they stay for your ability to treat them well. Um, people come back to you when you're customer minded. Um, I think, you know, I'm sure we've all seen a uh, screenshot Twitter who, you know, they'll have like a bad interaction with a business or a business owner will have a bad interaction with a client and then take it on themselves to publicly embarrass themselves and call it out, which I just think is unreasonable. But the best thing you can do for yourself um, is to be a be the type of person your clients would want you to be. That's not to say be a pushover, never do that, but there is a way to communicate everything. And in the seven years uh, that I've been actively running Thunder Cakes, I've never lost a client. When I problem solve, 
it's it's never it's never a thing that escalates because I'm constantly putting myself in the shoes of my customer and understanding like whatever frustration they might have and then trying my best to fix it. And you've got to humble yourself when you work in this world um, of serving people because that's what we do. We're we're in the service space. Even if you're not in food, you can be an artist. You can be whatever you serve people. That is, I think that's the beauty of entrepreneurship. Um, the second piece of that is kind of similar, but a little bit different. You've got to be honest with yourself first about expectations. Everyone is going to have different things that they're going to ask of you as a young entrepreneur. Oh, can I get a discount? The answer should always be no. That's number one. Um, but two, people are going to ask you to be flexible and things or they're going to ask you to maybe like throw something for the first time, throw an event for the first time. When I was asked to throw my first event for someone else, I was like, I don't fully know what I'm doing, but I'm 1000% down to figure this out with you. And if you're willing to give me grace, then I'm willing to give you everything that you've asked for. And mm -hmm. sometimes it's really as simple as just communicating expectations. Hey, I haven't done this before, but you know what? We'll figure it out together. Are you willing to work with me? It's gotten me further than just saying yes. Yes. And I need you to be a little gracious, you know? Yes. Mm -hmm. And this is my first time doing this. Yes. And it's always a yes. And. Mm, gotcha. That's great advice. The yes. And I need to think about that. Um, wow. It's tough. Well, can you go ahead and let us, uh, let the, my viewers know where they can find you at or follow you at? Yeah, um, so you can find me now in all of my wonderful uh, cooking tutorials on YouTube at Courtney Futch. Um, it's two, there's like a space in between, so it's just my name, um, Courtney with two E's. And then on Instagram, I am Courtney period MF chef. The MF does not stand for <laughs> most so it's they're my middle and last initial, but it's Courtney period MF chef. Um, and then it's the spread. So it's T H E period S P R E D. And then at thunder cakes, which is all one word, um, on Instagram. I got you. I'll probably just make it easy for everybody to link everything. Since I remember everything you said just now, link it all in the bio so they can find it easier. Also, okay. if, you're, if you're tuning into this for the first time, follow black catalyst on all social medias. I'll also link that below. Thank you guys for listening today.